Hi, good afternoon, everybody. So it's already past 2.30 Ghanaian time, so I think we should start. Um, well, first of all, welcome. Welcome to this AYA webinar, Five Strategies for Women to Succeed in Agribusiness. Uh, and a special welcome, of course, for everybody uh, joining us from Ghana, because this whole webinar, of course, is focused on Ghana. So thank you for being here. Um, just a quick introduction of myself. So I'm Lotte Marie, Lotte Marie Brouwer, and I'm the AYA project lead. And AYA is the, the project under which we are organizing uh, this webinar. So, um, but we'll talk more about AYA a bit later. So today we hope to uh, inspire you by sharing the stories of eight really great uh, female agribusiness champions. So you will hear us say the word agribusiness champion quite a lot today. So what we mean with an agribusiness champion, we mean a powerful woman that has started and grow her uh, agribusiness um, within whatever country and is now very successful and that she understands all the struggles that some of you already might be going through as well. So again, welcome and uh, we really hope you will enjoy this, uh, this webinar. So today we will also be live tweeting about this webinar under a hashtag Aya Live, both on Twitter and Facebook. So if you feel like, oh, I want to share that, I want to show people how I, I am now uh, also watching this webinar, uh, you can take a selfie, post it online under the hashtag IALive, and we will uh, find the post and actually start sharing it. So, um, yeah, I think we can uh, get started now. All right, so let's start with some housekeeping rules, really simple rules. Um, the first one is that we have about one and a half to two hours for this webinar, just so you know what you can expect. Um, I already mentioned that this whole webinar is based on the knowledge of eight female agribusiness champions. And we actually have two of them joining us live today. And we will have live sessions with them in which you can ask them questions. So we will have two Q&A sessions in which you can ask them questions. And in order to ask questions, you can do that by using the Q&A box. So below you, your screen, you can see a chat box and a Q&A box please only use the Q&A box because then we can manage it a bit better. So don't wait until we get to the, to the sessions. If you already have a question, uh, just post it on the Q&A box. And while, when we get to the business champions, we already have some questions lined up for them. Um, also to make this webinar a little bit more fun, uh, we'll ask you to, uh, to fill in some polls, um, which will appear on your screen. Don't worry, we'll talk you through it uh, once we get there but just so you know what you can expect from this webinar. Well, the agenda for today um, basically consists of two parts. So the first part is introduction. Uh, we're gonna talk about why are we focusing uh, on women in Ghana? Uh, why are we focusing on women in agriculture in general? And we're also gonna talk about uh, what AYA is. Um, the second part will be about the five strategies, which we'll introduce much better later. Uh, but what I already mentioned to you, so within the five strategies, we'll have those live Q&A sessions and also interviews with the two business champions that are joining us live in Ghana today. So the introduction, the big question, of course, is why should we focus on women in agriculture? Well, most of you who are joining us today are, of course, uh, active in agriculture. Maybe you are already an entrepreneur or maybe you are an aspiring entrepreneur. So probably you already have an answer to this question. But just to get on the same page, we want to get uh, through some of these facts and figures about why women in agriculture are crucial. So that actually brings us to the first poll. So I'm going to share this poll with you right now. So you should be able to see it on your screen right now. So what uh, the question is, is uh, how many people would be lifted out of poverty if the gender gap in agriculture were closed? So how it works, you just look at the answer you think is right, you click on it, you submit, and then we see the answers pouring in. So we only have three uh, answers uh, up until now, so please click on the answers that you think is right. So the first uh, answer, A, is 50 million, B is uh, 50 to 100 million, C is 100 to 150 million, and D is there would be no poverty if, women, uh, if, the, if the gender gap in agriculture would be closed. 
So when we talk about the gender gap, basically what we mean is that we all know that women have these different roles, right, in the agricultural value chain. So they're either farmers or workers or entrepreneurs. Um, and basically we know that in all these roles, they face these gender specific constraints that are hampering productivity um, and that are also just uh, hampering the well-being of families, of communities, and even limiting economic growth on a country level and on a global level. So if we could just take away all these constraints and close that gender gap, how many people would be lifted out of poverty? So right now, 35 people have voted. I'll just give you a few more seconds to vote and then I will uh, close this poll. All right. So again, you can just vote by clicking on the answer that you think is right and submitting. It's that simple. All right, so I'm gonna end the poll and share the results with you. So if we look at what you clicked, so four people thought it's 50 million. Another four people uh, thought answer B, 50 to 100. The majority, 19, thought it was 100 to 150. And 13 people are very optimistic and say, if we would empower women, there would be no poverty at all in the world. Well, let's just have a look at the right answer. So the right answer is actually C, 100 to 150 million people would be lifted out of poverty. So now also below the screen, you see that FAO, this, uh, this fact comes from a report from FAO and it's um, uh, being bold and underscored. So after this webinar, we will share this PDF with you and you can actually click on all these links and read the reports uh, that lie behind all these facts and figures, just so you know. Um, so we, if we would close the gender gap, a lot of great things would happen. Like I said, already on different levels. So if you look at a global level, um, it would actually uh, uh, add 28 trillion US dollars to global GDP. That's a lot of zeros. That's not nothing. That's, that's a big change in global GDP. And also on a family level, I always like this, uh, this, uh, this research from FAO that actually showed that an increase to a woman's income of only $10 achieves the same improvements in children's nutrition and health as an increase to a man's income of $110. So on all levels, people would benefit if we would close the gender gap and if we would support women in agriculture. So the conclusion out of this is that in order to reap those benefits, we need to take away those constraints, lift up those constraints, and then the potential of women should be unleashed. Well, those of you joining from Ghana probably uh, think, ah, I already knew this, because actually one of your most famous teachers already over a century ago uh, shared this really wise quote, uh, that if you educate a man, you educate an individual, but if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Well, it's the same principle, right? So if you focus on women, then you will have uh, benefits on all levels of society. So today's webinar wants to be a small part of that as well, of unleashing those constraints, so, uh, or lifting up those constraints. So basically we wanna, by sharing all these stories from female business uh, champions uh, in the form of these five strategies, we wanna help you as female agribusiness entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs to unleash your potential. That is the aim of today. So now let's get into what AYA is. So AYA is an initiative of TwoScale and TwoScale is a program that's implemented by two partners, uh, IFDC and BOP Innovation Center. So today we're actually in the office of BOP Innovation Center in the Netherlands. And the whole project is funded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, also of the Netherlands. So TwoScale is a big incubator program that's active in uh, nine African countries and has already established 52 partnerships. So TwoScale offers uh, a lot of uh, different support services to the business champions. So I already mentioned business champions are these successful entrepreneurs, um, but TwoScale looks at both males and females and sees how can we support them through different services, uh, this specific business champion, this specific company, but also in the value chain around it. So in the end, uh, 
good quality products can be uh, produced and also sold. And these products are being sold um, in regional markets, but also local markets, and also sold to uh, more low-income consumers, not just high-income consumers. So in two scale, we've had already a lot of business champions, but most of them are actually men. So also part of AYA is that we want to encourage women to become business champions. And that's why we have, uh, we interviewed eight business champions and two of them are joining us live today to share the knowledge, the knowledge that we learned within two scale, but also outside of two scale. Um, so what is AYA about? What, why are we called AYA? Well, those of you joining us uh, from West Africa, probably know that uh, Aya is a, is a West African Adinkra symbol and it stands for a fern. So that's why also in our logo, you see a fern. And the fern uh, stands for endurance and resourcefulness. Well, it shouldn't come to a surprise that we thought uh, female agribusiness entrepreneurs embody this symbol because whatever the world throws at them in whatever environment they are, they know how to grow and to, to persevere and to, to keep going. So that's why we thought AYA was very applicable for female agribusiness entrepreneurs. So practically what AYA is about is that it's a six month entrepreneurship track that consists of three phases. So we started in July, 2018, and we will end in uh, December this year. So uh, the first part is about get inspired. And that's actually what we are doing today. So we want to share all the knowledge of these amazing women uh, that already have gone through all the hurdle, hurdles that you might be going through right now and share their knowledge so you can get inspired to unleash your potential. Um, so today we're focusing more a bit on the soft skills of what you need to be successful. But after uh, today, we will actually uh, open up an application for training in Ghana. So we have room for 45 entrepreneurs to get trained. And in this training, we're already looking a bit more at technical skills, so at your business model. And what do you need to improve and professionalize your business model? Well, I'll tell you more about this at the end of the webinar. And like I told you, we're, we're opening the application process now. So I will also tell you what it's about and how you can apply. But out of the 45 entrepreneurs that we will train, we will select six that we will now personally coach one-on-one -on -one and actually look at your business model and see, okay, what do you need specifically to get to that next level and to become more professional? All right. So now the question, of course, is why is Aya starting in Ghana and why not in another country? Well, to answer that question, it's good to first have a look at where AYA stands uh, compared to other countries in the world. So let me again open up this poll for you all. So I'm going to open it right now. So I'm going to launch the poll. And the question is, what country has the largest number of female business owners in the world as a percentage of total uh, business owners? Do you think it's A, the United States? Do you think it's B, Ghana? Do you think it's C, Brazil? Or do you think it's D, the Netherlands, where we are right now? So what country has the largest number of female business owners, if you would look at it in a percentage? So I'm already seeing some votes coming in. I will give you a, few, a bit more time. Um, so if you want to vote, it's as easy as just clicking on the answer and uh, pressing submit and we will uh, see your answers. So I see that already 31 people voted. Now let's see if we can get a bit more before we close the poll. Is it the United States, Ghana, Brazil, or the Netherlands? All right, let's end the poll and see what you all did. So 12 of you thought it's the United States, that the United States has the highest number of uh, female business owners in a percentage compared to the total. Um, 23 thought it's Ghana, Brazil was uh, four people's preference and the Netherlands were five people that voted on that. 
So let's have a look what the actual answer is. So it's actually Ghana, really good. So again, the majority had the right answer. So what we've seen in the, in the MasterCard index of women entrepreneurs of 2018 is that they looked at 57 economies that uh, represent uh, combined about 80% of total female labor force in the world. Um, and they actually showed that Ghana has the highest percentage when it comes to uh, businesses owned by women. So 46.4%. So basically Ghana is beating all their global peers in business ownership. And that's not all. Uh, Ghana is actually also really good at um, the contribution of women in the agricultural sector. So uh, female entrepreneurs, their contribution actually contributes for 70 to 80% of all the food that is consumed in Ghana. So let's face it, basically that means that you guys already rock, right? <laughs> now the thing is, why do we need Ghana or that, why do we need Aya then if you are already doing so well? So basically what we're seeing, uh, if we get a bit closer and we have a bit of a closer look uh, of what hap is happening in Ghana, is that Ghana is of course a, a lower middle income country. And what that means is that a lot of the entrepreneurs and especially the female entrepreneurs are necessity driven. So necessity driven means that they are trying to survive or to support their family. So often they are entrepreneurs in the informal sector, have small businesses and um, they, well, those businesses normally stay very small. So they don't create a lot of jobs. So the reasons why that is, if you look at what the MasterCard index uh, also showed us, is that, well, in green, you see the things that Ghana is doing very well in. So women business leaders and women uh, entrepreneurial activity. We already discussed that. In orange, you see the parts that are a bit average or just below average. So that is uh, women financial inclusion, quality of governance, entrepreneurial supporting factors. But the parts that Ghana could really improve in, uh, in supporting their female entrepreneurs uh, is ease of doing business, women in tertiary education, women professional and technical workers, and last but not least, the support for SMEs. Well, I already told you that Aya, of course, wants to focus on uh, agribusiness entrepreneurs, female agribusiness entrepreneurs in Ghana. So it should not be a surprise that that's actually what we want to focus on as Aya. And that's why we also started in Ghana, because there are so many women out there doing business and doing well in the sense that they're going for it, but we want to support them better so that they can grow sustainable businesses. All right, so that was already part one of this webinar. And now it gets interesting because now we're actually getting to the five strategies and we're also about to interview uh, the two female business champions that are waiting uh, in, in Ghana right now to, <laughs> so we can, uh, can hear from them what they have to say. So let me first introduce the five strategies to you. So the first one is about being a go-getter. The second one is about how to do the balancing act. The third is about that you have to utilize your network. The fourth is about taking the leap. And the fifth is about making it a woman's world. So I've already told you a few times now that we interviewed eight female business champions. Uh, so now I wanna quickly introduce them to you. So here you see the, the first uh, four. So first of all, we have Catherine. Uh, she's the founder and CEO of Eden Tree. Eden Tree deals uh, in herbs, fruits, vegetables, and she's doing that in Ghana. So then you have Charity. Charity is the CEO of Green Wealth Farm. She's doing pigs, maize, coconut oil, also in Ghana. Then you have Elizabeth. So Elizabeth is actually part of Two Scale, and she works in Kenya, and she is the founder of Mogo Foods, and she does cassava flour. And I actually have her product here. So this is the cassava flour that Elizabeth is processing in Kenya. Then we have Faustina. So Faustina is the founder of High and Mighty Farms. She does corn, beans, cassava, and she even sells fertilizer to other farmers. And she does that in Ghana as well. So now we go to the last four. So then you have Harriet. 
Harriet is the co-director of Osserby Unique Ventures. They do eggs, poultry, pigs, fish, maize, a lot of different things, also in Ghana. Then you have Janet. Janet is the CEO of Jasma Agro Industries. They do processed gari, cassava, flour, and chips. Um, then you have Ndidi. Ndidi is our entrepreneur from, uh, from, from uh, Nigeria, sorry. And she's the co-founder of Ace Foods, and they do spices, spreads, and sauces. And I actually have some of her spices here. So they have ginger, ginger powder, garlic powder, and much more. And then last but, last but not, ne not least, we have Ruth. And she is the founder and CEO of Shalem Investments, and they do maize, beans, sorghum in Kenya. So that was a, such a short introduction. Um, the thing is, these ladies have so much knowledge and so much stories to share with us that we would never be able to put that in, in a two hour webinar. We would be sitting here until tomorrow if we wanna share all their knowledge. So what we did is we actually created some background materials on them per entrepreneur. We actually created an article, we posted it on our website. And when we share this PDF with you uh, after this webinar, probably tomorrow, you can actually click on the links and uh, read about them more. So, hopefully uh, that will do them more justice um now it's also time to introduce to you the two out of these eight uh, female uh, business champions that are actually joining us live today so live today in ghana waiting for us are catherine and harriet and again i did the introduction way too short they will introduce themselves properly in a moment when we'll switch to ghana but just so you know they're waiting for you and they're really excited to start sharing their stories all right, so how it will work is I will try and summarize all the knowledge of all these eight female business champions just by talking through it and summarizing it. Then we'll switch to the female business champions in, uh, in Ghana, uh, to Harriet and Catherine, and they will talk you through it live and share their experiences. And then you can ask them questions live as well. So, I'll say it again, if you have a question already for them or while I'm speaking about these strategies and a question pops up, please put it in the Q&A box. So by the time we get to the Q&A session, that we have questions lined up. So you can do that by clicking on the Q&A box below in your screen. All right, so let's talk about the first strategy, being a go-getter. Before we get into the whole strategy, it's interesting to note that that MasterCard Index of Women Entrepreneurs um, actually looked at, at Ghana also in terms of how much are female entrepreneurs accepted in society. Now, we already learned that there are very a lot of uh, female entrepreneurs in Ghana, but you would be surprised maybe to hear that still they're not very uh, accepted in society compared to their male, uh, male entrepreneurs. And so they actually ranked, Ghana ranked 35 out of 57 economies. So now you might think, well, 35 is not good, but it's also not the worst. So, you know, how should we feel about this? But actually Ghana ranked lower in terms of acceptance than Nigeria, Uganda, and Botswana. So you might think, okay, what does that have to do with being a go-getter? Well, the fact that society does not always um, accept female entrepreneurs, results in the fact that if you are now an ambitious entrepreneur uh, or an ambitious woman wanting to be an entrepreneur that you might hear from other people telling you you can't do it i don't believe that you can do it and also we have some aspiring entrepreneurs joining us today you might even feel um, yourself i can't do it so with this first strategy we just want to start by telling you you can do it you really can do it we have eight amazing women that already showed you the way, that already did it, but really, you can do it. And here's just one of the small reasons why, out of numerous reasons. So this is actually a nice did you know fact from a research uh, conducted by the Boston Consulting Group. And they showed that businesses founded by women ultimately deliver higher revenue, more than twice as much per dollar invested than those founded by men. And again, this is just one research out of so many researches that show that if you, as a female entrepreneur, start doing your business, there is a high chance of you succeeding if you do the right things. So basically, um, being a go-getter is also about 
understanding first that you're not alone in this. Like, when we discussed this with our uh, female business champions, they all told us stories about strangers, colleagues, customers, sometimes even family telling them, you can't do it. I don't believe that you can do it. So here you see actually some of these uh, examples. So Charity uh, of Green Wealth Farm shared with us that I used to be a teacher. My fellow teachers actually discouraged me uh, becoming a farmer. They told her it's for the illiterate, so she shouldn't do it. And also uh, in 2006, she tried to uh, buy 18 acres of land. And then uh, they told her that you're a woman, you don't uh, acquire or need to acquire land. So just an example of one of our business champions hearing you can't do it or what you're a woman, why should you be an entrepreneur? Then Didi had some um, interesting insights in this. So she said the biggest barrier is the mindset. Many women simply do not feel that they can achieve their highest potential given these societal pressures that we talked about and expectations. So Charity was experiencing from the outside people telling her, and then Didi is saying that she recognizes it that sometimes yeah, women also tell themselves that they can't do it. So the solution to that, you need to be a go-getter. What does that mean? So you need to focus on your success. You need to be confident, learn from your mistakes instead of being disheartened by them, and you should never give up. So Faustina actually gave a very nice summary of that by saying, I don't give up or feel sorry for myself. I just learn my lessons, work hard in the hope that by God's grace, all will be well, and we don't let ourselves be discouraged. So that quickly is about. Um, yeah, being a go-getter. And again, later, Catherine and Harriet will tell more about what being a go-getter means for them. So the second uh, strategy is about doing the balancing act. So in, uh, in Ghana, actually, the woman's role is still often seen as you have to do child rearing and you have to do home management. And of course, in the long run, we would like to see men helping women more. And maybe you're already out there having a very supportive husband and you say, yeah, doing the balancing act is not that hard for me. But the, the reality is that many of us are still struggling with both uh, being a good mother, a good daughter, a good wife, and also being an entrepreneur. So how do you do that balancing act? Well, first let's do a little reality check on, uh, on uh, the average Ghanaian woman. So again, we have a poll, so I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna launch it right now. Yes, so the question is that an average Ghanaian woman works 13 hours a day. That's a lot, 13 hours. Um, and then the question is what percentage of those 13 hours is, is spent on unpaid care work? So work that you do in the house or um, that you take care of your children or your family, all these different things. So again, you can vote just by pressing the answer that you think is correct and then putting, uh, clicking submit. So 13 hours, when I heard that, I was very impressed. <laughs> That's a lot of hours in a day. So if you haven't voted, please still do it. I see that about 50% has now voted. So again, it's as easy as just clicking the answer you think is right and then uh, submitting. So I'll give you a few more seconds to do that. Still see votes streaming in. All right. So about 75% has now voted. So I'm gonna end the poll and just share the results with you. Okay, so 6% of you thought it was answer A, 20%. Then 15% thought it's 40%. The majority, 58% thought it's 60%. And 21% thought it's 80% that is spent on uh, unpaid care work. So let's have a look at the right answer. So it's actually 60%. So again, the majority had it right. You guys are a good crowd. You have all the answers right. Um, 
so yeah, that's a lot, a lot of hours. That's about eight hours a day that is uh, spent on unpaid care work. And now you might think this is a Ghanaian problem, but actually this is a global problem in whatever country you look at. Um, still, women bear disproportionate responsibility for unpaid care work. So practically, globally, this is an average globally, uh, women spend one to three hours more a day on housework if you compare it to men. Also two to ten times more uh, the amount of taking care of children, elderly or the sick, again, compared to men. And also one to four hours less a day uh, is spent on market activities compared to men. So this is all hampering women's careers and their ability to have successful businesses. So um, Elizabeth actually showed uh, or shared something uh, with us about this. So she said, when I started my business, I also had a full-time job, so I was not able to afford staff. So my brother and mother helped me package products in the weekend. And um, in the weekends, I even brought my son as he was having so much fun packaging. And she also shared with us that sometimes that was the only way that she could see her son. Also, Ruth, if you look at the bottom of the slide, uh, Ruth also shared something about involving her children. So she said, I involved my children every step of the way. Uh, my husband and I would share the decisions we would make so they can understand. And now they are older and I'm proud they now want to be part of the business. So with this, we're not saying that, okay, do child labor and put your children always to work. What we're trying to say with this and what the business champions are trying to say is just try to involve your children in a way that they understand why you are doing the things you're doing and try to explain to them why your business is important. And the funny thing is I actually met Ruth and her son a few years back uh, while he was starting to get into the business and it was so great to see his, uh, his enthusiasm and how much he wanted to learn. Then also Janet has some very practical advice. Uh, she mentioned, you just have to manage your time well. Plan properly and um, basically communicate also to yourself but to your people around you when you will be home and when will you be at the workplace. Don't do stuff ad hoc, really plan it out. All right, so again, Harriet and Catherine will share their insights on these topics. I'm just trying to summarize uh, uh, what the other business champions have said. So now it's time already for the third strategy, and that is about utilizing your network. So we just want to take a moment and think about all the things, all the resources that you need to make a business successful. So of course you need money, you need land, you need inputs, you need knowledge, you need trailing, and much more. And this strategy is about how you could utilize your network uh, to, make, uh, to make sure that you get access to all these resources. So again, let's just do a little reality check. So actually, this research showed in 2009 that women-led companies are started with 64% of the capital compared to businesses owned by men. So with this fact in mind, we can also understand that women are often talking about access to capital and that they want to get a loan uh, because they cannot come up with the capital themselves. So in Ghana, it's interesting to see that um, access to capital is not so much a gender related thing, but it's more about the crazy interest rates in Ghana. So we've heard stories about interest rates going as up as much as 25%, which is really hard for women to get a loan. So I want to steer away a little bit the discussion from now going into access to capital, um, because we could do a completely, a completely separate webinar on that. With this uh, strategy, we just want you to, sh to sh we want to show you that even if you don't have access to a loan or to capital as a woman, you can still try to use your uh, network to slowly but steady get the resources you need to get started. So don't be discouraged if you can't get a loan or if you don't have the capital right away. Because a lot of our business champions shared with us that they also did not get a loan and now they have successful businesses. So, in general, it's known that women have less access to the resources needed for their business. So, 
We already talked about money. Another big part is, of course, access to and control over land. Um, so this study actually showed that of 58 emerging markets, more than 75% uh, have discriminatory practices regarding women's access to and ownership of land, which also makes it difficult, of course, to if, if you're a farmer. Um, also access to input seats and extension services are hard and also access to training. So women still often lack business and marketing skills. So how do you deal with all these things? So if you look at Faustina, she actually shared with us that I got the idea to start cashew farming and initially did so on a casual basis. But then her chief of her town saw how well she was doing and he offered her land to lease. She accepted, she started working together with other farmers and planting corn, beans, and cassava. And actually the end of this story is that she got so successful that she was able to buy the land from the chief. So now she's a landowner. Also, Ndidi shared uh, a practical tip and she said, you just need to be prepared to ask for help when you need it, especially as you embark on the journey of marriage or motherhood um, you just need to ask for help. So your vulnerability makes you human and does not detract in any way from your self-worth. So sometimes we have trouble just by asking the right people and she's saying, don't be afraid, just do it. So now Janet was sharing um, that if I could start my business all over again, I would look for partners. I would not go at it alone. So she would actually look for good partners to work with uh, then put all their produce that they're producing together and start looking for a market together. So looking back uh, on her business journey, she would do that differently. She would utilize her network more. So of course, resources, the resources that you need is of course more than just money and land and inputs. It's also about, are you surrounding yourself with the right type of people? So Ndidi uh, of Ace uh, Foods actually had a really, really good insight that she said, uh, you have to surround yourself with champions, critics, and mentors. So a champion serves as your biggest cheerleader, encouraging you to dream big and achieve results. A critic tells you the truth about your shortcomings and provides constructive feedback. And a mentor shows you what is possible through their life example. So she gathered these three people around her and really says that that contributed to her business success. So I shared with you a summary of the three strategies and I've already talked way too much. So it's time to tune in with the actual experts, uh, which are of course, Catherine and Harriet. And right now they're sitting on a couch in Accra with my colleague, Jennifer, who's working for Aya. So I think it's about time that um, we start talking to them as well. So Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Matamuri. Ah, great. So tell us, tell us and introduce the business champions to us. I will, wonderful. So my name is Jennifer Jennifer Jelen. I'm part of the IA team, I'm based here in Ghana. And today I'm sitting with two lovely ladies, our business champions. They're inspiring business champions who are willing to share with us some of the experiences and how they've been able to overcome some of the struggles and challenges that many of us women go through as entrepreneurs. So before we go into our first Q&A about the first three strategies that we shared, could you ladies please introduce yourselves, tell us your name and what you do within your business? Oh, thank you, Jennifer. I'm Harriet Roberta Ose, the co-director of Osebi Unique Ventures. Um, we are in Kumasi. We do in poultry, fisheries, um, hops, yes. pea green, uh, vegetables, crops, and we distribute to institutions, hotels, restaurants, and individuals all over Ghana. Thank you. Okay. My name is Catherine Kopredise. I'm the CEO of Eden Tree Limited. And what Eden Tree does is that we produce fresh vegetables, herbs, and fruits. Um, we package whole. Um, we also have the consumer range, the uh, convenience range. 
which is a cut-up vegetables, and then we also crush garlic and ginger, uh, which makes it convenient for working mothers. And then um, we have our growers who are sisters. We also have our own farms. Um, we have about a hundred products in our range. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Harris and Catherine. We're very happy and grateful that you can be with us today. Right, so up until now, we've shared and discussed three out of the five strategies. We've talked about being a go-getter, doing the balancing act, and how to utilize your network. So now I want us to spend about 15 minutes or so asking you a few questions about these strategies and how you have applied them in your lives and in running your business. So if I can start with you, Catherine, what does it mean for you to be a go-getter when it comes to running your business and how has it helped you to succeed? Okay, what a go-getter means for me is that uh, you never give up. You actually never give up. Um, there are many challenges as you go along, um, but you set your mind up to the fact that you will jump each hurdle that comes along. Okay, um, even when you fail, get up, shake yourself, and then try again. That's the only way that you're going to learn. You'll learn from mistakes. So never, ever, ever give up. So you're not giving up in your own business. Then what has it helped you to be able to do? Or how has it helped you to succeed in your business? It has helped me to succeed whereby we started 21 years ago. Wow. Therefore, if I wasn't a go-getter, it meant that I would just crumble at the first sign of a challenge and then that's it, I'll stop. No, I didn't. So that's how it helped me. Thank you so much. So as we all know, women in Ghana have many commitments, both on a personal level and a professional level. When has it been difficult for you to find the balance and how do you handle this, Harriet? It is by planning. Um, you need to plan your life. Each and every one needs to plan. And then physically, when you plan, it means you are focused. You, you know what you are in for. And that also helps you to get what you want. At the end of the day, your success is your uh, target. So each and every one who really wants to be successful in life needs to plan and then have a teamwork. Like for me, for instance, um, I'm a co-director of Fosebi Unique Ventures, which I'm, uh, my partner is also the co-director. So we have this teamwork, and then when we plan, we share uh, our, uh, the priorities, priorities mm -hmm. together. Where I need to take care of the farm or even the house choice. Sometimes there are issues like uh, my vaccinations. You see, I'm dealing with lives. So these lives I'm talking about, they are animals, but though they are uh, life beds and the pulse and all that I have mentioned. They need to be like us. So I have to think for them. So take care of them, yes. So when you plan, if I have to take my kids to the hospital, maybe we swap it. And maybe at the same time, I'm doing vaccinations for the beds. That is equally important. So um, you have to be there for measuring uh, consistent the time frame for the vaccines. So in this situation, I prefer to go to the farm because I can be strict on the workers <laughs> more than him. So this is where we, we, we share our duties. Yes. What about you, Catherine? When has it been difficult and challenging to be able to do this balancing act? And how did you manage to move to your story in that area? Yes, okay. And um, I'd like to say that um, Harriet's situation mm -hmm. is very different from mine in the sense that Harriet's partner is actually her husband, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. they actually <laughs> share and then he is supportive of, you know, what uh, she does. In my case, um, I found myself alone. I was a single parent. Mm -hmm. So therefore, how do I juggle? So then I get someone to support me. So then the one that I get support me becomes my wife. And I become the husband. You know, so that's how we juggle. You know, she does the gets the children ready for school. 
I drive them to school, come back. When I come back, I do my paperwork and my registration. And I start at about 4 a.m. in the morning. So once I've, I've gone out there, you know, sourcing, um, at about 6, she gets the children up, gives them a basket, gets them ready, and then I come back and then I drive them to school. So it's a support. What you need to do is ensure that you have support. It's interesting because we both have very different stories, and I'm sure many of the women who are tuned in, some can relate more to your story, and others can relate more to her story. But the beauty of it is you're showing us that no matter what your situation, it is doable. And, and it can be done. So we have juggle, but juggle and catch the balls at the same time. <laughs> Wonderful. And so, Kathy, we just heard um, in the webinar that in general, women have less access to the resources they need when they start their business, whether it's land, finance, knowledge, and so on. My question is, what resources did you develop at the beginning, and how were you able to manage to get access to those resources to start the business? Okay, what I did was that uh, where I live, mm -hmm. which is my ex-husband's uh, family home, okay. they had a big uh, land, which was about 10 acres mm -hmm. in the city. So I negotiated with them and told them that they'd give me about two acres to manage. Mm -hmm. And whilst I used the two acres, I would then try and keep the ground, you know, because it, it was costly trying, trying to maintain the ground. They agreed. And then um, I started with a very small capital, which, which was about 600 pounds. You know, and that's how I started, bought my seeds, planted, um, started with two households, um, and then plowed the profits back into the business. So it was actually a slow growth. And with looking back, I'm actually glad that I did that because sometimes it's not advisable to actually go for a loan before you start the business. Because then what it means is that you are already stressing yourself yeah. with a loan. Yeah. Now you're going to have to find your feet on how to run the business. Mm -hmm. But then you have a loan on your back. Mm -hmm. You know, it is not the best. Mm -hmm. So whatever level capital you can find, mm -hmm. you can make it work. Mm -hmm. The most important things that you need to do is that you need to be disciplined. Yeah. You need to manage the little funds that you have. Mm -hmm. Make sure you put it back into the business. Mm -hmm. Start paying yourself when the company can afford to start paying you. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, separate personal business from company business. I like the way, even though they were family, we still had to negotiate. We didn't just let you have it. We had to sacrifice something to maintain the rest of the land in exchange. That's, that's what business can to my best. Yes. So it's not like it's a, it's a gift, but you're working for it. Wonderful. Okay. And so, Harriet, yes. one of our business champions, Didi Nwani, Nelly says that in female agribusiness, you need to have three types of people champions who cheer you on, critics that keep you on the straight path, and mentors that show you what's possible through their examples. Firstly, do you agree? And do you have any examples of people who've been your champions, critics, and also your mentors? Oh, yes, I do agree with her. Mm -hmm. I do agree with her because uh, it is good to. Uh, criticize it is good to encourage someone um, in fact my champion is my grandmother oh, no. <laughs> she, 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 she has always been a grandmother who is like oh it will be well it shall be well yeah. it is well it's yes that is the, the, the song she, she sings to me yeah. it will be well so in fact this has also moved my morale in terms of all the difficulties I just think of this words and I know it is well mm -hmm. and then that is it. And then when I come to criticism, criticism, mm -hmm. uh, it is good to criticize but when someone criticizes you, go back and look on your field mm -hmm. because the person is not in your shoes mm -hmm. and he doesn't, all, uh, doesn't know how you are doing it and so you have to sit down, analyze uh, criticism and then with that, you will know that, oh, it is good to change from that or go by that. Mm -hmm. So I think that is how I should, uh, someone should handle uh, criticism. Mm -hmm. And then for me, for instance, um, I may say uh, mentoring. the mentoring, it has been my partner because he, he, he has the technical know-how. <laughs> And then it is uh, his field. So I have learned a lot from him. 
I have been humble and I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good student. <laughs> good <laughs> point. Anything he teaches, whatever you do with what he tells you, you are successful. And that has been a success with this farm. It's a huge farm. This poultry, we think of uh, our biogas, bio, biosecurity, sorry. You see, if you don't take all these measures, you can lose your best in a day. Yeah. So advice has helped us, and then he has been my mentor. That's good. That's wonderful. Okay, wonderful. And so, Catherine, why do you think some people don't make enough use of the wealth of experience and depth of resources that are available to them within the network? Okay, well, sometimes uh, we don't actually know what is out there. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, to sometimes we are not sure whether uh, they are honest, they are truthful, mm -hmm. whether they are actually willing to help you, or whether they are going to lead you astray. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes, to people don't have time. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. They're busy, everyone is busy. So, actually, getting together um, is not easy. However, um, I would advise that it's important that uh, once in a while we get together and try and encourage one another mm -hmm. because this is what we need. Okay, wonderful. So, Harriet, what advice would you give to women who don't take advantage of what's available and they don't do it because they're not sure of the response they will get? So, what would you say to those who don't want to go and ask just in case they don't like the response they receive? It is always bad to think of the response you will receive from someone because you stand to gain more than you lose. For me, um, whenever I'm coming to you, I'm coming to you with all the hope that I will get what I want. <laughs> so I don't think of your response and I don't want to know about it. Um, it is good to be focused. Yeah. Yes. And then um, anytime you, you are going for something from someone, you should think of the aspects of how profitable it is. The benefits rather yes, than the, the, the risks and all that. Mm -hmm. and so, so ladies, go and use your network. Go and ask the questions. Don't yes. worry about the response. And I gain, I gain more. Yes. You can only learn, right? Yes. You can only learn yes. from yes. Okay, wonderful. And so now, let's Marie, do we have any questions that we can ask our business champions right here? Yes. Yes, so the questions are pouring in. So thank you so much for uh, all those uh, really good insights. So the first question comes from uh, Ruka, and I hope I pronounce your name well. Um, and uh, the question is, what two things should one consider before accepting to partner with someone in your business? Okay, so ladies, I want to know what two things somebody should consider before agreeing to partner. Maybe you can give us one or you can give us the other. Okay. Um, first of all, you want to look at the character, mm -hmm. the integrity of the person. Okay. Is the person honest? Mm -hmm. Because that is uh, very important. Okay. You don't want somebody to come and partner you, and then the next thing they know, mm -hmm. you're losing your company. Okay. So, that's very so find somebody who knows them well, maybe get a bit of a character reference. See how you have that. Integrity. 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 That's, that's a big one for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you, Harry? What would you say? important to find out before you need to partner with somebody. Genuineness. Mm -hmm. You have to be genuine yourself. Mm -hmm. So with yourself, you can trust. Mm -hmm. And if you should trust someone, then I think business will be well. So be genuine about what you're looking for. Yes. Find who you can trust. Yes. And let them be, you know, they, they have to have something to offer you. Don't exactly. Yes. Yes. What, what is it that they're bringing yes. to, the, to the table? Yes. Yes. It has to be useful for you. Mm -hmm. Great question. Thanks, Dr. Marie. Any other, any other, what else do you have? Yes, yeah, so we actually also have a group from uh, CAMFED joining us live. So they're sitting in a group and they uh, shared some of their questions via WhatsApp. So first of all, hi everybody. Thank you for, uh, for uh, being live with us today. So the first question was, uh, what motivated you to get into agribusiness? What was your motivation? Okay, okay. Um, my motivation was, um, I was a single parent. And I knew that I had to look after my children. So I needed to do something. I prayed about it. I have a very strong faith. And then I was just led into a great business. Mm. I called my sister and I, I told her, send me literature on aloe vera. Mm. Lo and behold, she sent me literature on 
how to plant vegetables. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of eating tree. Wow. And I actually realized that it was a hidden passion that was inside of me. So it was actually a blessing. Wow. It was a blessing. You're very lucky. <laughs> But of course, if you haven't taken a step, you would have seen the Absolutely, yes. And yes. you found the person. Absolutely. So and, and my background is in banking. And mm -hmm. I remember when I told my friends that, oh, I was getting into agribusiness, they said, what's what? wrong with you? You're going to plant? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I said, yes. Yeah. Then you can find what exactly. you want to do. Exactly. <laughs> Five years down the line, you went, hmm. Okay, when <laughs> when they actually saw the books, they thank God you were a go get and you went yeah. with it and you got it. Wonderful. Any other questions for us, Dr. Marie? Yes, so we have a question here from Sandy. Sandy, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing your question. And it's um, if you have invested all your money in your business, but you are not getting good results, what should you do? Okay, so if you've invested all your money, you're not getting the results, what should you do? Oh, in fact, everybody has a chance of losing. That is the risk in business. If you are going into business, you shouldn't think of putting in all your money and then you think of losing it. Um, that is why we said you should plan. Before you take one step, you should know that there is another way around. I am a farmer. I grow uh, crops. Um, I grow cassava. All this, I bought the uh, cassava to, uh, to uh, plant them. And in fact, I, I, I have risked already, but my, my result was not too good. But that has not turned me back. I was able to, this, this time around, think of processing the cassava into cassava dough. I squeezed the starch. I'm using the starch for the letter, uh, feed for my pigs. Okay. So now it means I have added value to the cassava. So if I have added all my money into this cassava plantation, I don't think I have still lose. We should find a way to add, yes, value, and add value to and maybe it. get expert advice. Give somebody yes, exactly. Yes. Advice yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. So you always have to speak to those who have taken the lead yes. and then those who have the experience. And then you, you, you the way is your bronze. And, and then, sometimes, and, sometimes too, it is worthwhile getting professional consultation, right? You know, which will direct you as to if you're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. then you learn from it. Then you know, uh, it will straighten you. So get to know the best practices. Yeah. That people yeah. It may cost you, but I guess in the end, the value and the benefits yeah. would be worth it. There is and nothing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Sandy. Yes, that's great. Next question, please. All right, so the next question is again from the, the CAMFAT group that are joining us. So, and the question is, how long did it take you to be successful, so to get to this stage? How long did it take you? Well, I have been doing this for 21 years now. Wow. <laughs> so that's a long, long time. Yeah. Yes, and, and I will say 15 years. 15 so it takes a while. It's not an overnight thing, but no, you have to no, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see, I, I involved in this farming by selling eggs first. Yes, you said there was a glut, and then yes. you went and sold the eggs. I sold eggs at the market center. You could see me and uh, struggling with these women. And you see, when you get to the market, we yeah. have a, a egg queen and this queen and all yeah, that. Yeah. You have to yes. help. Yes. But I managed to sell 2,000 pairs of eggs in a day. Oh, that's a lot of eggs. Yeah. That's a lot of eggs. <laughs> okay. So it's taken a while, but it's taken for parents yes, and yeah, for perseverance. them to get that. Exactly. I think those are the key words. Mm -hmm. Perseverance, yeah. discipline, yeah. you don't give up. Yeah. You know, you just yeah. jump the head of so. yourself. And yeah. be, just be account for what, you, what you're spending, what's coming in. Keep your keep good records. That will help you to and be done. Yeah. Great <laughs> tips with it. I love it. Okay, good. And All right. Especially with farming, we have to environmentally discipline. Yes. We have to think of the environment so that pollution. Yeah. As well. So think about the environmental impact of all your actions. Are you polluting? Are you sowing even bad? You know, whatever you need to do, do it the right way to help you with your business. Excellent. All right. Okay. So next question is from uh, Christabel. And um, the question is, what market strategies did you use or are you using for your products? Okay. okay. Um, the market strategy that I came up with 
was that there were supermarkets in town. So what do I do to make sure that my presence is felt and that I could stay there. So that was, I decided to give them a total service. And a total service in the sense that we do everything for them, mm -hmm. as well as drive, distribute their packaged products, mm -hmm. arrange them on their shelves, mm -hmm. we price them, mm -hmm. the pricing level, everything is on them. So the only thing that the client does is that a consumer walks in there, picks up the stuff on the shelf and pays for it. That's all the work that we do. So and they the collect the money. We take the money. <laughs> that's an important part. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that was my strategy. And I realized that that strategy has worked because it's it's like you're doing all the work. You're giving them a total service. <laughs> yeah. What I like about what you're doing um, at the majority, it has worked for a long time, but now you're going to have your own outlet. Yes. They can come to you directly. Exactly. So you've grown, yeah. you, know, you have the brand, you trust you, and you're able to move it forward to another area. What about you, and yes, yes. marketing strategy? Yes, my marketing strategy is, you see, I'm working with the banks. They take my money, but they don't give me money. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going, I make sure my chicken, my eggs, I try to uh, slaughter and then dress them. <laughs> and then even cats, you see, they don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. Because speaking of it, when closing from the bank, it's already late. So yeah. I, I, I dress, I cut, sometimes I spice some of them. Mm -hmm. And then as I go to the bank, I serve them with, with, with my, my products. Yeah. I have fish, I have pork, I have uh, breast beds, yeah. I have eggs, very fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. And I tell them this is from the farm straight away. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been to the fridge or... I mean, it's fresh. Yeah. Yes, very fresh. Yeah. And then you can feel the taste and everything. Yeah. So this is how so I I'm doing it. convenient. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I care for you. Yeah. And you're also delivering. You're coming to them so they don't have to go such a you know their lifestyle is busy. Yes. So both of you have actually made it very easy for women to or for people to, to get hold of your items yes. because you know that they're busy. Okay, so great question. <laughs> Thank you for the answers, yes. All right, so let's do a, a, one last question for this round and then we'll continue with uh, two strategies and we'll have another round, of course, of, uh, of questions. And the question is, how do you stay relevant amidst all these all competition, all this competition mm -hmm. that's around you? So how do you stay relevant? Okay, so okay. Um, for me, it's building the brand. When you build the brand and you communicate the message of the brand, mm -hmm. okay, that singles you out from the competition. Mm -hmm. And for us in Ghana, uh, one of the issues is safety. Mm -hmm. You know, with vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Even though fruits and vegetables uh, are healthy for your body, yeah. if it's not done well, yeah. or if it's not grown well, or if it's contaminated, it can actually kill you. Yeah. So we have communicated uh, the safety of our brand. Yeah. And I think that's what has given, uh, sort of separated us from yeah. the channel. Brand new. Awesome. What about you, Harry? Yes. Um, in fact, I have always said I deal with lives. Mm. Because I deal with lives, any for even maize, mm. I have a probe. I probe the maize. Mm. And then soya, the uh, feed inputs, I take them to, uh, uh, to do analysis. Mm. And then I make sure that, okay, soya bean, it has to be, I am not a technical person, but because of what I have learned, mm -hmm. I do the analysis because I am feeding this uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. product to human beings, mm -hmm. human consumption. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that what goes in the animals is best. Mm -hmm. So I do analysis with all the inputs. Mm -hmm. And then even after that comes, I still go after composing the feed. I still do my finished feed analysis. Wow. So I'm sure of my protein content, um, all the necessary minerals. I don't give them medicine and all that. So in fact, with that, I am sure of what I'm giving out. I think the confidence you have in your brand and the way you work hard yes. sort of at a certain level, that would make you be able to sustain the competition because we know you, we trust you, and we're happy to be what you're doing. And I think quality sells it. Exactly. exactly. If you see my egg, it is different all <laughs> the eggs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think she sold the eggs. Yes. 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 You see my eggs yes. are yes. Brandon, yes. 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 Yes.
Then the prince is clear. Oh my goodness. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. All right, great. So um, I think it's now time to go to the last two strategies. And again, I'll try and summarize them. Um, and then we go back to Catherine and uh, Harriet and they will share with us how they feel about uh, these strategies. And we have, again, we'll have a uh, room for uh, the live Q&A session. So if you haven't asked your question, please still put it in the Q&A box and we'll try and get to it. Uh, already have, we have quite some um, uh, questions. So if we don't get to your question right now in the session, um, we will still try and answer them later via our Facebook. So just so you know that your question is not lost if it doesn't get answered right now. All right. So we did the 10 minute Q&A, so now it's time for uh, strategy number four, which is about taking the leap. So we already discussed earlier that um, most Ghanaian female entrepreneurs are necessity driven. So that in combination with a fear of failure makes them less likely to actually grow sustainable businesses that will also now start creating jobs for other women. Um, and of course we want to change that. So there comes a moment in every person's life, if you want to become an entrepreneur, that you have to just go for it, you don't look back and you take the leap. So that is what this uh, fourth strategy is about. So we want to give you some nice inspiration of this amazing author. Uh, as the Aya team, we all love her, uh, Chimamanda Adichie. Uh, she's of course this famous Nigerian author and she said, never ever accept because you are a woman uh, as a reason for doing or not doing anything. So that's some uh, nice inspiration right there. Um, so let's go to the next slide about taking the leap. So we already mentioned that, yeah, that fear of failure is an important factor preventing women from making a significant impact in the world of business. So now you might say, yeah, but isn't that true for every entrepreneur? Don't men also suffer from fear of failure? And that's actually true, but um, this study from the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor uh, in 2012 uh, interviewed both men and women about how they felt about their own capacity of running a business. And while um, more than half of uh, the men actually said, yeah, I feel capable, I think I can do it, uh, less than half, like about 46% of the women uh, thought that they were capable. So yes, it's a problem for both men and women, but several studies show that it's a bigger problem for women. So that's why it's good we want to address it today and uh, talk about take the leap. So this is uh, what Elizabeth from Mogo Foods uh, shared about this. So she said, uh, you don't need a lot of money to start your business. Start from where you are and with what you have. Edu educational background does not matter. What matters is the passion that you have for the business and all the skills will come later. So then we asked her, okay, that sounds awesome, but don't you, don't you have these fears sometimes, the fears, fear of failure? And then she said, well, you know, sometimes I don't even sleep because of some fears I have about the decisions that I made that day. But when I feel fear, I just try to convince myself that I did the best I can. So when you're feeling these fears, because I know that a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs are watching us right now. So when you feel these fears, it's completely natural. All of them have felt them, but it's about how you deal with it. So Faustina also had some nice insights about that. She said, when you think and have the idea, set a goal, be prepared to take away any doubts about whether you can make it or not. Uh, have the self-belief that others have been able to succeed and so you can too. And that is also, of course, what we want to do today. We have these eight amazing women, of which two we have live, uh, showing you how amazing they are and, and sharing with you all their experiences. Just have a look at all these women and think uh, to yourself, if they can do it, why, why shouldn't I? Well, I can do it as well. So that's what we want to share with you today as well. And of course, Catherine and Harriet will talk more about this uh, in a minute. So now the last strategy is I think a very interesting one and also a very important one because up until now, the first four strategies were very much about the individual, about you as an entrepreneur. But now we wanna take it a bit broader. And here's why. I think 
all of us as women, whether you are from Ghana, whether you are Dutch like me, whether you're from Colombia, from France, from Ethiopia, from Zambia, if you work in the agricultural sector, we all know that feeling of walking into a boardroom, going into a conference and seeing mostly men. Well, there's nothing wrong with men, don't get me wrong, but most of these men are middle-aged and let's face it, we all have experiences of trying to be taken seriously and it just takes such a long time before they take you seriously. So in the end, of course, um, we want women to uh, be taken seriously and make it more of a woman's world. So Elizabeth actually had some uh, a nice, or well, not so nice story to tell about this, but she recognized what we, uh, what we are saying. So she shared with us that sometimes when she goes to a meeting, they expect a man uh, and someone that is older. Uh, and also when she started out, that some people thought that I was too young and they didn't believe me uh, when they met me for the first time. But of course, she did what we all do, she just persevered, she tries to show how capable she is, and then with time she convinced them, which is good. But today we want to talk about making it a woman's world, and that is what Ndidi also shared with us. So what she said, the key to making it a woman's world is that as you rise in your journey as an entrepreneur, leave the door open for other women to enter. Because we, we've seen that, right? That maybe as a woman, you are now successful, but my, you might now get the feeling like, oh, I need to you know, like, uh, stay on my position and, and prevent other women from rising up as well. So Ndidi is saying, don't do that. Be the first woman to have, have achieved something or one thing or the other, but never be the last. Ensure that you are mentoring and grooming other women to take over from you. And fight against that stereotype that women do not support other women. Uh, instead, be recognized as an individual who supports others. And then she quoted Madeleine Albright that uh, made this famous quote that Madeleine Albright said, there is a special place in hell for women that do not support other women. It's pretty extreme, of course, to say that, but I mean, it, it has some truth in it. So she said, start today to serve as an advocate and champion for other women. So it comes down to this, that you have to uh, not compete with one another, but as real women, mature women, we should start supporting one another. So build each other up and don't bring each other down. So there are basically two parts to this. First of all, it's internal. So inside your own organization and also for the men that are joining us here today, look inside your own organization and see how can I support women to become more successful in what positions can I put them and how can I train them or support them in any way that their potential that we already talked about will become unleashed. But it's also outside of your organization. So you, we talked about these three roles and also Harriet shared with us uh, about the people in her life that fulfilled these roles. So you have critics, champions and mentors. So ask yourself, can I now become a critic, a mentor um, or a champion to another woman? And it's not just for your own business, but also we talked in the beginning of this webinar about getting to those benefits on family level, community level, and global level. So only when we make it a woman's world, we can actually get uh, to those benefits, which we all want, I'm sure. So that's very briefly was already uh, the last two strategies. So again, it's time to hear what Catherine and Harriet have to say about this. Um, so let me see if we can connect to them. Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Can you hear us? Okay. Yes, yes. Great. Wonderful. All right. So over to you. Okay, good. So ladies, we just heard that fear of failure is actually preventing many women from making a significant impact in business, even though they can. What is your general attitude, Catherine? And what does it help you to achieve when it comes to fear of failure? Okay, um, with failure, um, yeah, fear is natural, mm -hmm. okay, but then you don't let it handicap you. You just have to, like I said, jump in where those new aspects come. Mm -hmm. When you fail, you actually learn mm -hmm. from your failure. So what, how you go about it differently, mm -hmm. but you don't just uh, crumble mm -hmm. and lie down. No, you get up and then you try again and you try. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't give up. Mm. So this attitude for you, what are some of the things that's helped you to be able to actually 
do or succeed at. Or yes. Achieve. Um, when I look back, I am sometimes amazed mm. at what I've just gone through, mm. you know, and the normal circumstances, you know, you will be shaking, you know, wondering how. But then I look back and I've gone through it. Yeah. You know, if you, you have to go through it. The day does not stand still. Mm -hmm. You just have to go back to life. And I guess exactly. people sometimes don't realize that women who are successful have gone through failures or have their own fear. Yeah. So it's good you're saying it can all come. Yeah. But just keep going. Again, some, sometimes it gets so bad that you even cry because you don't know how do I do I'm this? How do I do <laughs> this? Yes. But then eventually you look back mm -hmm. and you realize that ah, you went through it. So, so Harriet, what actions do you take to help you overcome um, you know, any fears that you may have? What do you do practically to ensure that if you have any fears, they don't actually stop you from doing what you need to do in your business? Um, I have strategic plans mm -hmm. or targets mm -hmm. down there so that um, if should it happen, yeah. uh, I wouldn't be shocked okay. because it's part of it. There is always um, that kind of fear in every business that you shouldn't let that suppress you. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't happen that way, you are not a business entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You go out to do business and then you want to be successful. So what is your fear? Mm -hmm. It is just a stress to your emotions. Mm -hmm. So for, uh, I think I personally, have don't, don't don't have that spirit of fear mm -hmm. and so i treat it as such before i take a step i have a target and then that target makes sure that when it goes the other way around then i i, I don't get any fallout but i push something in there mm -hmm. i do so there are things you can do and put in place yes. so that the, fa the risk of failure is reduced yes. and you're more likely to succeed yeah okay wonderful thank you for that okay so why do you think it's important Catherine? For women entrepreneurs, business, every business women to actually support one another. We've heard about the fear, the challenges, the challenges. Why is it important for us all to support one another? So that we can grow, so that we can encourage each other. Because yeah. uh, even though, yes, uh, we can get up, run, sometimes it is important for someone to encourage you that, oh, you're doing your work, or you're doing a good job, you're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. You know, it is it is reassuring. Mm -hmm. You see, so it's important, and then also um, we encourage others to who are coming up. Yeah, you sure. know, yeah. to take the mantle because yeah. we, we we don't want it to die when we die. It must it must go on. It doesn't happen for all of us. I think that sometimes people are afraid to support me because it's this thing of oh they'll overtake me. Their competition. But there's enough for, for there's all enough. of us. There's there's enough to go around. And in fact, we're not even doing enough. Right, you know, we need more people. Yeah. Yeah. Women come on board with that. We need more hands. Okay, so Harriet, can you give us examples of how you have helped other women through with your varied um, experience over the years? How have you helped other women? We're talking about supporting each other. Yeah. Tell us how you have done it. Oh, I have been so instrumental to the women in poetry in Ghana mm -hmm. and physically to Manasi mm -hmm. In fact, um, I act as their special advisor to the executives. Okay. And our, our objectives are something like we want to come out successfully as women in poetry mm -hmm. because it's very difficult mm -hmm. to such business. And it looks as if the men want to be like they are doing their overall no, no, something. Yeah. So they have now seen that we are even better than all. Yeah. And um, the next thing is uh, I help some of these students from uh, KNUST. Yes. Okay. And um, Ghana Poetry Project, they sometimes bring some girls to, who have finished, they are graduates. Yeah. They are home, nothing to do. Yeah. So they, they bring them to me. Sometimes I accommodate them and Train them. Yeah. How long do they stay with you for when they come? Oh, some of them will stay for about six months. Wow. Yes. And then I give them free accommodation, um, fa uh, facilities, mm -hmm. everything free. Mm -hmm. And even because they are from school, I start by even getting the day old chicks. I make sure I create a place as a demonstration for them yeah. so that they will know the basics and then the risks 
and then uh, when 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 you see when you see your best coming together, yeah. you should know that they are cold. Right. This is how they so talk to us. Yes, yes. And them. when you see them doing like this, yeah. you know that they are hot. You see all oh, this. <laughs> <laughs> she has yeah. yeah. the language of the yeah. 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 through their actions, yeah. and I can understand. So when you come, I have to take you through all this. Yeah. So when they are coming together, you should know you need to provide yeah. them with yeah. it. Yes, so uh, new questions are, uh, are pouring in. So here we have a question from uh, Amulema. Um, it's quite a long question, and I think some of them were answered, but um, here she asks, how do they involve men in their business? So that's question number one. And then question number two, very important, are there times when they feel like crying? And how do you do that? <laughs> well, I did, I did mention that. Yes. 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 I did mention that. So can you, yeah. you remember a particular time when you want to cry? Oh, frustration. You know, there are, yes. there, are, there are times when, you know, um, you need to pay the bills, but then your client have not paid you yet. And, mm -hmm. and they're actually dragging their feet and paying you, you know, so you, you just get so frustrated and, and, and then you just cry, you just cry. And then after crying, you know, you know that it is well. You wipe away, you know. Yeah. And then you carry on. Yeah. You, know, you just shake yourself up and then you carry on. It's natural. Yeah. It's natural. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, yes, if I want to add to that, mm -hmm. when a uh, staff or a worker yes. uh, break my vest, mm -hmm. it breaks their, their neck, so cruel to the vest, in fact, I wet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, a lot. When we did the head counts, they were doing this for quite a long time. Yeah. You see, you give someone a job and you think you are helping somebody, yeah. but in the end, he tried yeah. to steal. Yeah. So these things make me sad. Yeah. You don't know how I started and where I have gotten to. Yeah. And I'm paying you for what you're doing. Yeah. And you are so cruel to these beds that they are paying you. Wow. Break the beds, they are next, and then you take them. You see, wow. this makes me so yeah. sad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so, much. so for the men question, I think we've heard Kara talk about her husband being a co-director. Yeah. And I think your farm manager is a man. Yes. So what in terms of half a percentage? You, you know, you know the men, the yeah. men. We we use we, we use their strength because yeah. physically they're strong. Yeah. So uh, the strategy that we have here is that women are very detailed yeah. in, in certain jobs. Yes. Whereas we use the men to do the lifting because they're lifting. strong. Yeah. <laughs> so use them where you need them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Another question for us. <laughs> All right. Great. Um, so uh, next question is from Dorothy, uh, and she asks, uh, "Do you have to have an agricultural background before you enter into agribusiness?" Mm, that's a good question. I yeah. mentioned that as well. That I did not. I I did not go to agri school. My background is in banking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then it was a hidden passion. 
sometimes you don't even necessarily have to learn it. Mm -hmm. You find that you have the passion. Mm -hmm. And once you have the passion, then the passion will push you to learn mm -hmm. about what it is that you're doing. Yeah. Like, I don't know if she knew she had the passion to talk oh, to the birds <laughs> or, 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 or talk to her fish. Yeah. But then it, it, it came out, yeah. you know. Yeah. So um, sometimes you don't have to, but mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't go to Abuja. And I think many times, even if you don't have that background, there'll be somebody out there who does, who you can partner with and who can come and work for you for the business is to grow. Because yeah. you won't do everything yourself. Yeah, but I have, I have to learn. learn. Yeah. I have to learn. I have to learn. Yeah. All right. So next question again comes from the, the CAMFAT uh, group. And the question is, what if a man has a problem with sharing responsibility with you? Maybe they're a partner or working in your business as an employee, but what if a man has a problem with you as a woman? How do you deal with that? Okay. Yeah, I'm, um, I, I, I'm very straightforward. You know, you either work with me or you don't. So if you want to work with me, then we have to get along. You have to follow. Um, I mean, we have general meetings, you can't speak up, but then uh, you have to be able, I am the MD, mm -hmm. I'm the director, so you have to be able to follow mm -hmm. my lead. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So if you have a problem working with a woman, then you exit. Right. So, uh, yeah. I think, I think uh, in this situation, both have some ideas to share. Mm -hmm. So, and it is good to learn from the female side and then the male side as well. Um, there are times when you really need the men. Mm. And then there are times when we also come in yeah. to do marvelous work. Yeah. So, we have to work together. Yes. The gender shouldn't be the same. Yes, but the question was that if the man mm. has, has a problem, problem yeah. working with you, a woman. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a good one. You have to. Yeah. That's a good one. All right, thank you. Yes. So we had, uh, let's do our last question. And again, for all the people that asking questions, we'll, we'll answer your questions at a later point also through our Facebook. Yes. Um, but the last question for now, um, and we've had several around this topic, how do you deal with partners that sabotage you? So apparently some of our viewers have had some bad experiences with uh, partners well, sabotaging them in, se in several ways. So how do you deal with that if that happens to you? Yeah, I think I mean, you had an experience where clients would often copy and try and sabotage your business in that way. Yeah. Do you want to share? Yes. It yes. Um, in certain instances, there's just nothing that you can do. I mean, we've had clients that we, we have said, and then what they did was that they actually eventually copied what we did and then started marketing their own their own brand within the same store. So like uh, our client then becomes our competitor. Which is a form of sabotage. Exactly. Be a partner. exactly. In and in this sense, there's nothing you can do because the, the retail space is so yeah. bad. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. So you but then on. your quality yeah. and your total service, yeah. make sure. You do. Because even with that, we still are dealing with them. Yeah. They, we still have a space within their retail. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Yes. Yeah. Sabotage. Oh. So the, the example about the man killing the bird, that's a sabotage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clearly. Yeah. But then also when you like what I said that the special thing I do is my analysis. Mm -hmm. What I give to the pigs mm -hmm. or the animals, yeah. like the pigs. If you buy my pig, no fat. So wow. these are some of the competition yeah. that I don't fear competition. Just let me come to the market with you. Yeah. I will finish selling mine before yeah. they can come to you. So at least that is enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> so focus on doing what you're doing right yeah. and yeah. now. Yeah. Anyway, because it's the best part of life, it can happen. It's yeah. awesome. Awesome. So I think we're going with the Q&As. Ladies, it's been fantastic having you here. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy it greatly, as you can tell. But thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to more engagement with you on the IR project. Thank you, ladies. Catherine and Harriet. Bye. Bye bye from, from Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. Oh, 
Hello. Yes, sorry, I was on mute. So we want to uh, we want to finalize um, these five strategies with actually also asking you to make a commitment. So this is will also be our last poll of today. And it's about are you ready to commit to supporting women in agribusiness? We've heard today about how important it is to support women um, and whether you are a man listening in or a woman who's already in agribusiness or someone aspiring uh, to become an entrepreneur we all need each other and we all need to get women more successful in agribusiness if we want to reap those benefits that we talked about so this will be our last poll of today you just have to click on the the answer that you think is right um, in this case well just follow your heart what you think is the right answer and um, yeah again just click uh, press submit and then uh, I'll share the results with you in a minute. So the votes are still uh, uh, coming in. So we hope uh, you also enjoyed, of course, listening to our, uh, our uh, female business champions. Um, we will also look at the, an at the questions that we did not answer yet. Uh, and we will actually share the answers also through our Facebook. So don't worry if we didn't get to your answer, we will at one point. So. I, we don't have all the votes yet, but let me just uh, also end the poll and share with you the results. So out of everybody that voted, 95% is willing to also start supporting women in agribusiness. So we're really happy with that. And we hope that we inspired you a bit today uh, also to do that and how you could do that. So, of course, as Aya, we want to play our part in this as well. Um, and that's why what I already told you at the beginning of this webinar, our next phase in our entrepreneurship track is that we want to train 45 uh, agribusiness entrepreneurs, female agribusiness entrepreneurs in Ghana. So we also got some questions pouring in about how can I apply and, uh, and uh, what are the conditions. So let me just briefly tell you that now. So we have room for 45 agribusiness entrepreneurs. Uh, the condition is that you should already have uh, a agribusiness so it's not that you have an idea but you actually already started out and then within the training we can help you to improve and professionalize your business so the location is in Ghana so you have to be Ghanaian um, in the training we will look at different things basically your whole business model model from do you have the right value proposition are you targeting the right customers how do you now practically market your product? I saw also a lot of questions about marketing. So in the training, we would uh, get into that. How do you distribute your, um, your product? Also gender inclusion. We talked about it. How can you also support women within your business? We will also talk about that and much more. So if you are interested, go to our website. You see the link here and you can register. Don't worry if you now feel, oh, I'm, I have to write down the link. Again, we will send you an, uh, an email and tomorrow probably to all the people that registered for this webinar. You will be able to see uh, this whole video. We recorded the whole session. You will be able to see the PDF that has all the links and we will give you the registration link as well. So that actually leaves me with uh, thanking everybody, uh, all the people that uh, tuned in, all the participants. Thank you so much uh, for making this webinar a success. Uh, for taking, participating in our polls, for asking these great questions. And of course, a special thanks to Catherine and Harriet who made this, uh, this webinar uh, such a success and actually sharing all their practical uh, uh, experiences. Uh, so thank you so much. And um, I hope to either see you uh, in the training or online. So here you also see our Facebook link. Please join our AYA community and then uh, we can together can actually close this gender gap in agriculture. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.